Hey, Fortnite fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Chat Sports, and today we have some fresh San Francisco 49ers news and rumors to get to. Fresh off a tough loss, there's some good news that we're going to dive into right after this. Before we start, though, mailbag coming up on Friday. Use the hashtag 49ers in the comment section down below. Ask any 49er question you want. I will most likely answer it on the air, as many as I can, I should say. So again, hashtag 49ers, get your questions in down below right now. That way I can go ahead and answer them in our Friday mailbag. All right, let's start with the big rumor this week, and that is surrounding actually linebacker Kawan Alexander potentially coming back at the end of the year, maybe in the postseason. Uh, hold your horses a little bit. So just to recap, torn pectoral muscle on November 1st for Alexander. That makes the season done for the year, very similar to what J.J. Watt did for the Houston Texans. This usually takes about six months to recover. So you think back to November, then December, then January, then even the Super Bowl, February would be four months. But apparently, there's a very small chance that Alexander could actually be playing in the post season. Here's what head coach Kyle Shanahan had to say about Kawan, quote, it's a really big injury and that would be down the road. They're made of the right stuff. That's Alexander and Sherman. When we think that way, even though it's in your mind, sometimes your body will follow so we won't rule it out, but it's a long shot and not any and not anytime soon. Okay, we just clarified it's some medical research on this. I'm not a doctor, but basically a pectoral muscle tear can have different percentages of, I guess, the tear. So you can have 80%, you can have 20%, 40%, 50%. You get the point of the pec actually being torn off the bone is how it actually works. The less that was torn, the better chance he has of actually coming back, maybe playing with like a big bandage or a sling or whatever, or whatever they described in the article. But it looks like it depends on where he's at in terms of how much it was actually torn. Same thing's happening for J.J. Watt right now. J.J. Watt might actually be able to come back and play in the postseason for the Houston Texans as well. Let me just say this. I don't think Kwan Alexander is going to be healthy enough to play. Okay? And if he does, it would be like literally the Super Bowl because he has seven weeks or six weeks, whatever the number is right now, to get prepared for it. And of course, going back to November, I just don't think he's going to come back. So I want to you guys get your helps up because I know this is a very um, popular thing right now among 49er fans and on 49er websites and stuff saying, oh, Kawan could come back. Yes, technically, he technically could, but it's looking like it'll be a very, very long shot. So don't get your hopes up in terms of Kawan Alexander. Still very important, though, and that's my question for you guys here. Although there's going to be a quick ad if you're watching on YouTube. Scroll down. I need you guys to answer this question for me. It'll be pinned in the comments. Do the 49ers need Kawan Alexander to actually win a Super Bowl? Do, do, how bad do they need him? Scroll down. Let me know in the comments section down below. All right, Pro Bowl selections were last night. The 49ers naturally had a ton of people selected as starters and alternates for the Pro Bowl. They had eight starters, or excuse me, four starters and eight alternates. And of course, if you go to the Super Bowl, then you don't have to play in the Pro Bowl. And that is all of our hope here with our 49ers. Here are your four Pro Bowl starters, Nick Bosa, Kyle Juszczyk, George Kittle, and Richard Sherman. No surprise there. And your four AFC or NFC Pro Bowl alternates from our San Francisco 49ers. Eric Armstead, DeForest Buckner, Jimmy Garoppolo, Raheem Mostert, uh, excuse me, Raheem Mostert, Weston Richburg, Joe Staley, Jimmy Ward, and Fred Warner. They, I think that, that they absolutely nailed this. This is as correct as you could get with our 49ers and the rest of the NFC. Bosa had to go. Juszczyk had to go as like the only good fullback in the league. Excuse me, George killed the best tight end in the league. He had to go. Sherman going is a very, very... um. Not a surprise, but in the NFC, you got to realize not a lot of great cornerbacks in the NFC. And Jalen Ramsey not having a great year overall in terms of like other cornerbacks that you can think of that are actually good. Richard Sherman getting the nod as a Pro Bowl starter is a real credit to how much he has worked back from that Achilles injury. All of these other guys, you know, Armstead and Buckner are having crazy good years, but they were better pass rushers, obviously, who turned out to be starters, especially in the interior defensive line. Guys like uh, Fletcher Cox and guys like Aaron Donald, and of course, those, uh, those the, a guy like Agree Jarrett as well. Fred Warner, you would think could be a starter, but then you look at the starters and they're Bobby Wagner and Luke Keekley. So it's like, oh, okay, well, he probably isn't better than Bobby Wagner. He's close, but he's not better. But seeing that Raheem Mostert got a uh, nod for special teams is really, really cool. Obviously not a nod as a running back, a nod as special teams guy, because he also plays a lot of special teams for us, is a really cool honor for him as well. I know he's very, very excited about that. But overall, for me, the Pro Bowl got it right. This is all good. Garoppolo was not good enough to be a starter, because you have, obviously, Breeze and Wilson, but he was good enough to be a uh, alternate. And there's a very real chance you could have almost, you know, a dozen to ten plus players all playing in the Pro Bowl if the alternate stuff works out the way that we want it. But of course, we all want to be in the Super Bowl, and that should exactly, that should really be exactly uh, what we are hoping, to not have to play in the Pro Bowl literally at all. 
All right, a little bit of cleanup news here. Something I reported a couple days ago that the Niners might be interested in Terrell Suggs, which, of course, would have been a great pass rusher who, of course, was let go by the Cardinals just a couple of days ago. Well, he's been claimed. We all know he's a Kansas City Chief, and a lot of you were saying, oh, well, you know, they didn't make a, a claim for, Kwana, or for uh, Terrell Suggs. This stinks. Hold your horses. It has actually been reported by multiple networks, including the NFL Network. The 49ers did put in a waiver claim, claim for Terrell Suggs, as well as Baltimore and Seattle, I think, was another team that made a claim for him. It turns out that the Chiefs won because they had the worst record in terms of the teams that submitted a waiver claim. That's how the waiver wire works. The team with the worst record, whoever submits it first in terms of the worst record, gets to go first. The Chiefs, worst record. The Niners were way down here because they have a really, really good record, and therefore they were unable to go up and get Terrell Suggs. They did try, though, which would have been very, very interesting for San Francisco going forward because we know D Ford is another player most likely not going to play in their final two regular season games, could come back for the actual postseason, whether that's divisional round, MC title game, whatever, but they could have really used another pass rusher, and it shows that they were thinking this because they did put in a waiver claim for Terrell Suggs, but I guess the past is the past, and the guy who played in a lot of games this year and was actually pretty productive when he was with Carolina will no longer be in the NFC as he leaves the Cardinals, goes to the waiver wire, and now picked up by the Chiefs, but the Niners did make an attempt. we got to give him credit where credit is due. Before we move on, be afraid to subscribe to Chat Sports. You guys have never subscribed to the channel. Well, come on in. Click the red subscribe button. We just hit 10,000 subscriptions. So we're trying to get to 12,000 maybe by Christmas. That'd be awesome. Go ahead and click the red subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate that. And then moving on here, before we jump into the news update on uh, Sherman, uh, Richard Sherman and K1 Williams, have you guys bet on the 49ers yet? You guys like gambling on sports? It's very, very fun. It's very, very easy. The best way to do it is with our friends at BetDSI. Go to chatsports.com forward slash bet. Use the promo code 49ers. Get 120% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. So you put down 100 bucks, it turns into $220 to bet on the Niners who have never lost back-to-back -back games this season, meaning, think about it, they should be beating the Rams on Sunday. We'll have to wait and see. Chatsports.com forward slash bet, promo code 49ers. You guys know the drill. All right, moving on here. A quick injury update. The good injury news. Richard Sherman, K1 Williams, they were back at practice yesterday. It looked like they were running around and getting the full amount of reps. Both are expected to play on Sunday. And listen, this is a secondary that needs both of them back. K1 Williams has been our slot cornerback the entire year. He's been fantastic, really, really good in the slot. One of the reasons why Julio Jones was able to carve up this offense or this defense because he was lined up in the slot and matched up against our backup nickel cornerback for a lot of the times there. And of course, Richard Sherman, for as great as Witherspoon and Mosley have been, Sherman has been better and has really locked down the right side of that defense. So to have both of these guys back in the secondary is huge for a team that was missing almost 60% of its secondary in the Atlanta game. We talk about how Atlanta carved him up in my 49er video on Sunday and how or Monday and how, you know, Julio Jones had a great day. It's true, but he wasn't going against a full-strength Niner secondary. This is going to greatly improve it. Richard Sherman coming back, K1 Williams coming back as well. They will play on Sunday against a Rams team that you should be able to beat. They just got thumped by Dallas. They have a very, very hard chance of making the playoffs now. They need a lot of help to actually get there if they have not already been eliminated with based on where they're at right now at 8-6. and six. Probably not mathematically, but pretty darn close. Don't, don't quote me on that. But the Rams are going to come in motivated because they know they can ruin our season. If they, we lose to the Rams, it makes it even more difficult to go ahead and get the one seed, whereas... You know, that two seed, the three seed, whether it's all the way down to the five seed, these are all possibilities right now with the Saints playing well, the Packers playing well, and then, of course, Seattle doing what Seattle does. Again, the most likely playoff seeding, as we said, the one seed, the five seed, if you lose to the Rams, it probably doesn't affect that outright, doesn't guarantee anything, but you still have to go into Seattle in a couple of weeks and actually get a big win to be able to have a shot at winning the NFC West and hopefully not go on the road for every single playoff game. Before we move on, get your mailbag questions in. If you haven't got a question in, down below. Haven't done this in a while. Hashtag 49ers in the comment section down below. That's the best way to answer or to get your question answered on my Friday mailbag edition. So go ahead again. Use the hashtag 49ers and jump in on the questions. Final bit of news here. And I wanted to throw this in for all the guys out there who are a little bit discouraged about the 49ers. A big loss to the... Uh, the uh, Atlanta Falcons 29-22. We all saw what happened on Sunday at Levi Stadium. It was a game we should have not have lost. As maybe some of you guys are discouraged with where the 49ers are going right now because the defense has struggled the past couple of weeks. It was a bad loss. 
They got to beat the Rams on, on, on Saturday. I think I said Sunday earlier. On Saturday, because the game is on Saturday, which is a little bit weird. But I don't think we're going to have any sort of hangover. The players are going to bounce back. They were asked a lot of questions in the postgame locker room on Sunday about how do you bounce back? How do you move past this? And Mike McGlinchey actually had one of the best quotes saying, quote, it's one game. We're going to bounce back. We're, we're going to get better from this. We left too many points on the field on offense. That game shouldn't have gotten to the point where it was at. They are going to bounce back. They are going to respond. Garoppolo said the same thing. The running back said the same thing. I think Kittle said the same thing in his postgame uh, interviews and all the interviews he's done during the week. I am not that concerned about the Niners, and it feels like they are not that concerned either. So for all you Niner fans, and I read the comments. That's why I asked you guys to go ahead and use the hashtag 49ers, but that's I, I digress. I read the comments on the last video. There is some, is some concerned Niner fans out there in nine in the uh, – in, in, in and around San Francisco and, of course, all around the United States who think that we are going down, not peaking at the right time. And I would disagree. I think this was a, a an eye-opening loss, and it probably is going to go ahead and recenter them, hopefully. That way they're able to move forward and get a big win on Sunday or on Saturday, and then obviously a big win on the following Sunday against the Seattle Seahawks. Quickly, before we move on, before we wrap things up, if you guys still need to get that special someone, a Christmas gift, how about chatsports.com slash 49 sale? That is the best place to go to get all sort of authentic Nike gear, all centered around the 49ers. We have a handy dandy link for you guys in the description. Chatsports.com slash the number four, the number nine, and sale. Go and check out all the great deals that are up there we've been doing in the past couple of weeks. There's some great stuff. I encourage you guys to jump on it before it is too late. All right, here we go. All the time we have for today on our San Francisco 49ers only chat sports YouTube channel, trying to get you guys up to date. All the news, all the rumors. Again, you're going to hear about Kate or about uh, Kwan Alexander. I understand we're excited about the possibility of him coming back. Pump the brakes on that a little bit. You can get excited, though, about K1 Williams' return, Richard Sherman's return, and the fact that the Niners were at least trying to bolster that pass rush with a Terrell Suggs just did not work out in the end. I'm not worried. We'll see what happens on Saturday. Obviously, we'll have a full coverage after the game in terms of my grading video, as we always do. So, again, subscribe here if you are not already subscribed to the Fastest growing, and in my opinion, the best chat sports only 49ers channel. We highly encourage you guys to join the club here that we're growing. And again, had a lot of fun this season. Let's keep it going, keep the momentum, keep the energy. Two games away, Saturday, the following Sunday, and then of course we'll see where we're seated in the postseason. And hopefully we're going to make a deep playoff run as the 49ers have already clinched. Of obviously a playoff spot, just a matter of where are you seated? Are you one? Are you two? Are you five? We'll have to wait and see. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott. We go ahead and sign off. That's all the news we have for today on our 49ers channel. Keep you updated on more stuff later on. Mailbag video on Friday. Do not forget. Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott. Signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.